Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Ellie. I'm a registered associate nutritionist. And today I'm talking to you about the link between gut health and hormone health, how the gut microbiome impacts the health of our hormones and estrogen metabolism, and how we can support that gut microbiome, which in turn will support our hormone health. So let's start with the basics. What is oestrogen? Oestrogen is the hormone responsible for the development and regulation of the female reproductive system and secondary sex characteristics. You may have heard of the term estrobolome or estrobolum, depending on how you pronounce it. And this is a collection of bacteria in the gut involved in regulating and metabolizing the body's oestrogen circulation. So let's talk about the relationship between the gut microbiome and oestrogen. The health of the gut microbiome impacts how the body processes and packages up the oestrogen. Microbes in the estrobolome within the gut produce an enzyme called beta-glucuronidase, which helps process oestrogen into a more active formulation. The more beta-glucuronidase created in the microbiome, the harder it is for your body to process and get rid of the circulating oestrogen. And so if you have too much beta-glucuronidase and can't process oestrogen, your body can't actually eliminate it and so it gets recirculated in the body, which is not a good thing. If too much oestrogen is getting reabsorbed and recirculated within the body, this can actually increase your chances of developing oestrogen-related diseases. So that's things like endometriosis, polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS, as well as general signs of oestrogen dominance, bloating, acne, low libido, hot flushes, heavy periods and weight gain. So the question is, how can we support our gut microbiome, specifically that estrobolome, which in turn will support our oestrogen levels? As someone who's always been fascinated by gut health, I'm going to share my eight top tips with you to nourish your microbiome. Tip number one is to increase your fiber intake. We should be aiming for at least 30 grams of fiber a day, but the average intake in the UK is only around 17 grams. So start slowly, build up gradually over time and strive for around 30 grams. My second tip is to consume the brassica family of vegetables. So this includes broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, kale, and Brussels sprouts. And these can help package up that oestrogen and re-inoculate the gut with good bacteria. You also want to think about consuming fermented foods, which I'm a big fan of. So things like live yogurt, miso, kombucha, and sauerkraut. And these contain good bacteria or probiotics. And as well as that probiotic bacteria, you'll want to eat prebiotics, which feed the probiotics and encourage them to grow. And this includes onions, garlic, asparagus, legumes, and Jerusalem artichokes. Studies have shown that stress management techniques such as mindfulness and meditation have been really helpful in supporting the gut. And that's because of the gut-brain axis. So the gut and the brain are constantly communicating via the vagus nerve, and this works in both directions. So by supporting our stress and our mental health, we are in turn supporting our guts. Now we've talked about fiber, but specifically, we need to focus on diversity. So we should be aiming to consume 30 different plant foods a week, including things like fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts, seeds, legumes. And the easiest way to do this is to have a really colorful, varied diet. So think about eating the rainbow. Exercise and regular movement have also been shown to support our gut health. And the key thing here is really to find what you enjoy and do it consistently. If you're forcing yourself to attend a HIIT class three times a week, it's not going to be sustainable. So whether you enjoy Pilates, boxing, dancing, find what works for you and stick to it. And my final tip to support our gut health and our hormone health is to reduce exposure to toxins in personal care products, household cleaning products, processed and packaged foods, and specifically plastic, which has been linked with disrupting our hormones. The gut is a piece of the hormone puzzle that we cannot ignore. And so as a nutritionist, I always take into account my client's dietary and gastrointestinal health 
when considering hormone related issues. Now, if this is something you'd like to learn more about or perhaps consider working with a nutritionist, I've left my details down below. So feel free to drop me an email and you can also book in for a free discovery call to chat further with me and find out more about the consultation process. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and perhaps learned something new. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up, leave a comment down below saying your biggest takeaways and hit the red subscribe button for more nutrition videos and recipes. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you in my next video.